This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kathy of www.skippopscratch.com The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics Edited by Charles W. Eliot Book 5 1. Of Kung Cheng, the master said, a girl might marry him. In him was no crime, though he has been in bonds. He gave him his daughter to wife. Of Nan Young, the master said, When right prevails, he will not be neglected. When wrong prevails, he will escape law and punishment. He gave him his brother's daughter to wife. 2. Of Su Qian, the master said, What a gentleman he is! But could he have grown to be a man like this were there no gentleman in Lu? 3. Su Kung asked, And what of me? Thou art a vessel, said the master. What kind of vessel? A rich temple vessel. 4. Young, said one, has love, but he has not a glib tongue. The master said, What is the good of a glib tongue? Fighting men with tongue-craft breeds much bitterness. Whether love be his, I do not know, but what is the good of a glib tongue? 5. The master moved Chi Tiao Kai to take office. He answered, For this I lack confidence. The master was pleased. 6. The master said, Truth makes no way. Let me go afloat and scour the sea, and you shall follow me. When Su Lu heard this, he was glad. The master said, Yu is more venturesome than I, but he does not know how to take things. 7. Ming Wu asked whether Su Lu had love. The master said, I do not know. He asked again. The master said, A land of a thousand chariots might give you charge of its levies, but whether he have love, I do not know. And how about Chiu? A town of a thousand households, a clan of a hundred chariots, might make Chiu governor, but whether he have love, I do not know. And how about Chi? Girt with his sash, erect in the court, Chi might entertain the guests, but whether he have love, I do not know. 8. The master said to Zhu Kung, Who is abler, thou or Hui? He answered, How dare I aspire to Hui? If he hear one thing, Hui understands ten. When I hear one thing, I understand too. The master said, Thou art not his peer, I grant, thou art not his peer. 9. Tsai Yu slept in the daytime. The master said, Rotten wood cannot be carved, nor are dung walls plastered. Why chide with you? The master said, In my first dealings with men, I hearkened to their words, and took their deeds on trust. Now in dealing with men, I hearken to their words and watch their deeds. I righted this on you. 10. The master said, I have met no firm man. One answered, Shen Cheng. The master said, Cheng is passionate. How can he be firm? 11. Tzu Kung said, What I do not wish to have done unto me, I likewise wish not to do unto others. The master said, That is still beyond thee, Tzu. 12. Tzu Kung said, We may listen to the master's culture, but on life and on the ways of heaven his words are denied us. 13. Until Tzu Lu could carry out what he heard, he only dreamed to hear more. 14. Tzu Kung asked, Why was Kung Wen styled cultured? The master said, He was quick and fond of learning, not ashamed to ask those beneath him, and that is why he was called cultured. 15. Of Su Chen, the master said, in four ways he was a gentleman. His own life was modest. He honored the man whom he served. He was kind in rearing the people. He was just in his calls upon them. 16. The master said, Yen Ping was versed in friendship. Familiarity breeds courtesy. 17. The master said, Sang Wen lodged his tortoise with hills on the pillars, Reads on the uprights. Was this his good sense? 18. Su Cheng said, Su Wen was thrice made minister without show of gladness, 
and thrice left office with unmoved face. He was careful to unfold his rule to the new minister. What do you think of him? He was faithful, said the master. But had he love? I do not know, said the master. How should this amount to love? When Tsui slew the king of Qi, Chen Wen forsook ten teams of horses and left the land. On coming to another kingdom, he said, Like my lord Tsui, and left it. On coming to the second kingdom, he said, Like my lord Tsui, and left it. What do you think of him? He was pure, said the master. But had he love? I do not know, said the master. How should this amount to love? 19. Chi Wen thought thrice before acting. On hearing this, the master said, Twice, that is enough. 20. The master said, Whilst peace reigned in the land, Ning Wu showed understanding. When troubles came, he turned simpleton. His understanding is within our reach. Such simplicity is beyond our reach. 21. When he was in Chen, the master said, Home, I must go home. My batch of boys, ambitious and hasty, their minds cultured, their schooling ended, know not what needs fashioning. 22. The master said, As Po Yi and Chu Qi never recalled past wickedness, the foes they made were few. 23. The master said, Who would call Wei Sheng Kao straight? A man begged him for vinegar. He begged it from a neighbor and gave it. 24. The master said, Honeyed words, flattering looks, and overdone humility. So Chi Ming thought shameful, and so do I. To hide ill will and ape friendship, so Chi Ming thought shameful, and so do I. 25. As Yan Yuan and Chi Lu were sitting with him, the master said, Why not each of you tell me his wishes? Tsu Lu said, Carriage and horses I would have, and robes of fine fur to share with my friends, and would wear them out all free from care. Yan Yuan said, To make no boast of talent nor show of merit were my wish. Tsu Lu said, We should like to hear your wishes, sir. The master said, To make the old folk happy, to be true to friends, to have a heart for the young. 26. The master said, It is finished. I have met no one who can see his own faults and arraign for himself within. 27. The master said, In a hamlet of ten households there must be men faithful and true as I. Why is there no one as fond of learning? End of Book 5